Hi there. I have a fascinating game to show you from TSEC, season 19. Stockfish was playing with the black pieces against the Komodo chess engine. So in round 47, TSEC season 19. Let's have a look. E4 from Komodo. And we have the Sicilian defense. And we go into the Sicilian Neudorf, which is this A6 move. Bishop e3, this is kind of the English attack system, which was popularized by British grandmasters like John Nunn, Spillman, Chandler, and others, Nigel Short. We have b5 here, queen d2, and now queen c7. This is the end of the book. And here, Komodo castles queenside, and we have what appears to be a novelty move in this position. Uh, Stockfish actually plays knight fd7. This is a really interesting novelty move. It's not, at least it's not in chess base um, online. The usual move is knight bd7. And for example, g4 has been seen before. This is an example stem game, a high level stem game in the over the board world. A copian, not a copian, against Lee in Canty Mask 2013 ended in a draw after this very sharp skirmish but the Queens did come off so it's technically about equal it ended in a draw in about 70 moves so there's, there's various stem games but they all they, they kind of start with Knight BD7 so this is a bit of a mysterious novelty another very sharp move here is actually Bishop takes B5 this was played in uh, the game Demchenko against Golovin Petersburg St. Petersburg 2012 and yeah it's it's kind of fascinating stuff I mean this this technically this stem gain uh, stem gain I don't know if it influenced uh, Stockfish at all but um, it is a sharp position and technically White's doing quite well there uh, I think White might have fluffed it up it ended up in the draw anyway that particular game but anyway this seems to be a, a novelty move and it leaves the king in the center and it shows that black's not that keen to castle kingside we have the move a3 and now bishop b7 king b1 knight c6 and now h4 and stockfish and then just plays h5 and it seems as though is white's attacking potential limited here uh, so we have now rook h3 being tried on g4 perhaps knight de5 this position it still looks okay for white quite nice for white but rook h3 is very interesting we have knight f6 rook g3 rook d8 and now queen f2 this sets up a battery sometimes maybe the b6 square is a bit sensitive for black we have rook d7, bishop e2, g6. Now there is a pawn chain here, which may be a little bit sensitive because a knight is eyeing e6 and a rook is eyeing g6. And, you know, perhaps if it was a blitz game between humans, there'll be a temptation at some point to sack a piece to try to uh, undermine this pawn chain. We have a, a more patient. Uh, move f4 not uh, yet doing anything too radical although it was already you know it was tempting for knight takes e6 because it's uh, two pawns for the knight and a lot of pressure it's a fascinating position in its own right but f4 was played and we have now b4 now one thing to notice about this pos position in conjunction with the pawn chain what's underneath uh, this pawn chain is that the king's still around it's a kind of tactical issue and on b4 you can imagine sometimes this rook might be an exploitable loose piece as well as a knight on b4 because that's not going to be protected by anything and that's not currently protected by anything so there's a few things beneath undermining this pawn chain which could be like bonus points and in fact, uh, Komodo plays 
quite a stunning move in this particular position. Uh, so it's night is attacked. I wonder if you can guess what it played if I give you 10 seconds to pause the video here. Okay, it did actually play knight takes e6. It's it is a fascinating knight sack here. If a takes instead knight takes, black is unveiling an attack against e4, and this this would be about equal, for example. So perhaps it is a little bit wise to avoid that consideration. Knight takes e6, and what is going on here? By the way, on route to this unprotected piece, this is now unprotected as well, of course. I should have mentioned that. So there's a few unprotected pieces and there's a king in the center. We have f takes and now rook takes g6, attacking that unvented piece and it's actually protected. If b takes c3, in fact, white could consider rook takes f6 and if e6 is protected, it seems here, interestingly, f5, uh, is quite dangerous. For example, like this, with rook d3, and this is just a fictional scenario. But after bishop b6, rook e6, it seems as though king safety issues are, are quite major here. Uh, if black has to play bishop e7, then bishop takes d8, f6, f7. And of course, this is not all forced. It's just an example. And here, queen f5. And this position, white smashes through of rook takes d6, unveiling an attack against the queen. If king takes, queen takes, and then bishop takes. There's lots of branches there <laughs> in what was mentioned. Uh, just just to go back, instead of queen c6, if queen c4, this is asking for, you know, to be here, you know, there immediately hits the queen. And here, if the queen is permitted to go back, which is actually the strongest, then rook takes d8 check. And that ends up being better for white. Uh, white ends up winning the rook on h8. So this echoes, you know, there's, there's loose pieces to be picked up as bonus points, it seems. And here, by the way, if we look at another branch, knight takes e6, and this position. This is kind of fascinating with rook c3, believe it or not. Uh, and bishop takes h5. And you might wonder, what is going on here? He takes d7, <laughs> check. The thing is that the queen is also now a loose piece on c3. There's bonus points with these loose pieces. Yeah, if bishop b4, there's bishop a5. The queen's picked up and, and black's still in trouble with the king's safety issues and losing more material. Uh, so yeah, my my kind of impression is that this intuitive piece sack does expose a lot of loose pieces and king safety issues as bonus points. Uh, we have rook f7, so not taking on c3, and now a takes b4, knight takes b4. So clearly there's a loose piece here, and this is only protected by the rook, and there's a loose piece here. And there's actually a square which could be used to attack all of them at the same time virtually. We have bishop b6, which does mean now that the queen can come to d4, that central square, viewing a lot of loose pieces potentially. Queen c8, if queen c6 is played here, bishop a5 attacking that loose piece, and say d5 protecting the knights then f5, and this is creaking now after queen d4, hitting b4, hitting h8. Yeah, it's it's uh, resulting essentially in quite a loss of material, and in fact h8 could be the one to take and then come back. So as I say, lots of bonus points on loose pieces have been scored here. So bishop b6, we have queen c8, and now, yeah, rook takes f6. This isn't you know, essentially about mating the king, this rook takes f6. It is about this, using this bounce square in the center to win material, it seems. So after takes queen d4, hitting b4, hitting f6, we have bishop e7. If rook f7, then queen takes h8. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot, uh, uh, you know, coming off the board here. Uh, there's a lot of loose pieces that have emerged uh, by shattering 
you know, the pawn chain. Um, that's a fascinating aspect of the position generally, uh, I would say, uh, and maybe a logical aspect of the position. Uh, if um, knight c6, then just queen takes f6. Uh, so we have here bishop e7 clinging onto f6, dropping b4. Okay, and black is in pain here, it seems, and takes on f4. We have bishop e3, rook f7, and now queen b3. And this does mean there's a lot of pressure on the black position in various ways to be demonstrated. Uh, for example, the queen on b3 can be used to construct a battery. Another example, the queen on b3 supports maybe knight b6 later. We see rook g7, bishop c4, and rook g6. And we see now bishop f4. So yeah, some common squares are being celebrated as well, either through the battery or through this combination. We have king f7, and now this drops off. Bishop takes d6, rook d8. And now we have check. Rook f6. If king g7, uh, then that just leaves the bishop hanging with no compensation. So rook f6. We have rook takes. Bishop takes and now e5. And now Stockfish uh, plays bishop takes h4, which seems a bit greedy in the circumstance. But on bishop g7, it is a bit miserable after, for example, knight e2, knight f4. And for a moment, it looks as though, hold on, isn't black okay here yeah it's it's creaking after this because the knight can reroute eventually to the e4 square and then use for example c5 and the queen's coming over here it looks pretty, pretty nasty i think the trend is going to be for white there uh so let's go back there so so e5 we have this seemingly greedy bishop takes h4 Bishop e2, bishop g5. If bishop e7, as another example, then bishop takes h5. And in this position, the crazy move knight d5 is the fast track for the queen coming over here. For example, like this. And bishop takes e7 is devastating. You know, for example, like this. This is just winning. So we have uh, bishop g5. And now knight a4, and this is also, this is pretty awkward now. This knight b6 is potentially awkward because uh, it kind of threatens sometimes, yeah, to put the queen on here for bishop f3, a skewer. Uh, we have h4, which does address one issue in the position that the knight also unveiled the potential for queen g3 just then. It was very sneaky, this knight a4. For example, if bishop a8 trying to address knight b6 a little bit more, then the sneaky queen g3 hits g5, and bishop takes h5 is checkmate. So yes, knight a4, h4, at least it tries to deprive this g3 square from the queen, but it seems to run into knight b6, and there, there aren't too many squares for the queen. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, yeah, there aren't too many squares for the queen. If you look at it, look, how many squares are there for the queen? The queen can't go to like anywhere apart from c6. I mean, how how is this? This is this is um, deep, you know, analysis that knight a4, you know, it provides all these facilities all at once. Knight b6. Queen G3. Stockfish is trying to like juggle, you know, stop Queen G3, but I can't stop this. And this is picking up material, it seems. Uh, you know, with Bishop F3 fundamentally. But first this check is played to put the king on G7. And now Bishop F3. And yeah, it's it's a pretty nasty skewer. It's winning material. It's like this game has been about quite quite a lot about winning material, in fact. Um where you you might think as a human it's about getting to the king, but it seems as though the whole thing is about bouncing off largely uh, and attacking loose pieces. So we have queen b5. If uh, queen e8, you know, just bishop takes b7, there's no real counterpunch there. So queen b5, and this just goes into a materially lost situation now. It's, it's kind of cleared up now. It's not so chaotic. White's just mopping up. And um, here, uh, you know, white's just vastly ahead of material uh, at this level. And there's a passed b pawn. 
and here after e6 the game ended now i have to say um the analysis here was like watching i would say a stephen king uh you know film as on tv rather than reading a book there's probably millions of variations uh so this is just a very very superficial view of this game and just an impression i get about this PSAC. i just wanted to give some kind of abstract impressions and it did seem to me that it opened up a whole load of opportunities so, you know around loose pieces if black's going to play for b4 in the night off black ends up with a loose knight if black ends up playing you know g6 then they're opening up the diagonal which means that sometimes f6 and h6 will be loose you know all, all these three key squares b4 f6 h6 and then later, you know, if the queen's on b3, you know, we've seen the devastating effect. It can switch to the king side. It was very, very interesting, you know, tactically about winning material. A very chaotic game, but this is just a very, very simple analysis to what it could have been. But, you know, uh, I thought I'd keep it short and sweet here. <laughs> what do you think about this game? Anyway, it's the only uh, game so far that Stockfish Ellen has lost in the tournament. And the amazingly intelligent chat on TSEC, uh, some have speculated it might be to do with the aggressive pruning Stockfish does. And maybe there was more detail in the Komodo's um, analysis, but maybe, you know, less moves ahead, you know, be get better breadth. Who knows, really? Uh, so anyway, it shows that there is even scope, even for the greatest to still improve. Chess is such a vast game. There was speculation that Stockfish NM would remain just undefeated throughout the whole division, Premier Division, but it did take a knock in this game. I suspect it will wipe out its opponent when it plays on the white side of this. I think this kind of territory is very chaotic and about micro, 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 little downsides of like loose pieces, which as humans... We just wouldn't be able to like appreciate such a piece sack generally, I think. It's usually about, you know, king safety. It's not so much about loose pieces everywhere being attacked. So I did find it fascinating. I hope you found it kind of interesting. If the game continued, just as an example, by the way, uh, I think the B pawn would be playing a significant role. It's there to be pushed without being really challenged. Uh, for example, like this, it's just rolling forward, uh, just winning more material. So it's not that complicated, actually, because we've got that B pawn here. We don't need to use the E pawn, uh, just in case you're wondering. Okay, by the way, there's uh, a new course I've got at Udemy, King's Crusher TV slash Opening Tango, if you want to check that out. It's got quite a good rating. Uh, it uh, seems to be well-received, uh, so I hope you check that out. Uh, there's the bit.ly slash Leader Chess playlist. Um, there's also a bit.ly slash stockfish chess playlist uh, Kings Crusher TV slash discord I can't point over there but you can see it or the bit.ly slash chess world come and invite me for a game if you register at bit.ly slash chess world uh, register there I'll be able to invite you for a game five days move okay comments questions like share subscribe with the notification bell always appreciated and actually let's have a pop trivia question what country are you from Yes, I'm secretly feeding the new <laughs> the YouTube neural network algorithm. I'm getting to uh, you to answer, even if you don't know anything about chess. Just post what country you're you're watching this video from. Yeah, I'm open about it. I'm open about it. Okay. <laughs> Thanks very much. Cheers then.